Hey, it's Mr. Spencer. We are summarizing chapter six of The Great Gatsby. Good to have you back. All right, so chapter six is a major turning point in the novel. After the magical happiness of Gatsby and Daisy's reunion in chapter five, we start to see the cracks that may unravel the whole story. Fitzgerald worked really hard to get it just right because of how key this part of the book is. He rewrote it many times. Now, Gatsby and Daisy try to integrate into each other's life. Both attempts don't go as romantically as they would hope for. And what about Tom, Daisy's husband? Gatsby can't hang with these upper crusty people long because he just doesn't understand how to behave. Despite his years working under a boating captain named Dan Cody, working crew on this millionaire's yacht, and Daisy is repulsed in chapter six by the vulgar crowds at Gatsby's latest party. Recipe for eventual disaster? Chapter six in detail, all right? The beginning of chapter six, a reporter shows up to interview Gatsby. He is on page 97, becoming well-known enough, and there are enough rumors swirling around him to become newsworthy. The rumors are even crazier that he's involved with a liquor pipeline to Canada or that his mansion is actually a boat that moves up and down the bay, never staying in the same place. What? Okay. He did have a hydro plane, though. Anyway, and the narrative suddenly shifts time frames, and future book writing Nick interrupts the story to give us some new background details about Gatsby. The time shifts around. Okay. So Jay Gatsby's real name is James Gatz. Nick tells us. His parents were apparently failed farmers in rural North Dakota. He's an entirely self-made man, so ambitious and convinced of his own success that he transformed himself into his vision of the perfect man, Jay Gatsby. Before any of his eventual social and financial success, he spent his nights fantasizing about his future out on that farm in North Dakota. Apparently, James Gatz met Dan Cody, a copper and silver mine millionaire on Cody's yacht in Lake Superior. Cody seemed glamorous, and Cody liked Gatz enough to hire him as a kind of jack of all trades for five years. They sailed around, indulged Dan Cody's alcoholism, and Gatz learned how to be Jay Gatsby. Cody learned or tried to leave him money in his will. But an estranged wife, some confusing circumstances, she claimed the money instead. Nick tells us that Gatsby told him all these details later, but he wants to dispel the crazy rumors now in chapter six. The narrative flips back to the summer of 1922, where the book started. After a few weeks of trying to make nice with Jordan's aunt, who controls her money and directs her life, Nick returns to Gatsby's house. Tom Buchanan and an East Egg couple who has met Gatsby before stop by while horseback riding. It's unclear why. For a quick drink, maybe? Is Tom snooping on Gatsby? Tom has no idea who Gatsby is, but Gatsby goes out of his way to remind him that they met at a restaurant a few weeks ago. Chapter 4. Remember that speakeasy where Wolfsheim was? And to tell him that he knows Daisy. Bam. Gatsby invites them to stay for supper. The lady of the couple disingenuously invites him over to the dinner party instead. Gatsby agrees. Nick follows the guests out and overhears Tom complaining that Gatsby has clearly misread the social cues. The woman wasn't really inviting him for real, and in any case, Gatsby doesn't have a horse to ride. Tom also wonders how on earth Daisy could have met Gatsby. The three leave without Gatsby, despite the fact that he accepted the invitation to go with them. <laughs> Shady. The next Saturday, Tom comes with Daisy to Gatsby's party. Remember, every weekend, Gatsby throws big parties. Nick notes that with them there, the party suddenly seems oppressive and unpleasant. Gatsby takes them around and shows them the various celebrities and movie stars that are there. Tom and especially Daisy are somewhat starstruck. But it's clear that to them, this party is like a freak show where they are coming to stare at the circus and where they are above what they are looking at. Gatsby and Daisy dance and talk. Tom makes see-through excuses to pursue other women at the party. Daisy is clearly miserable. 
While Gatsby takes a phone call, Daisy and Nick sit at a table of drunk people squabbling about their drunkenness. Daisy is clearly grossed out by the party and the people there. While the Buchanans are leaving, Tom guesses that Gatsby's a bootlegger. Since where else could his money be coming from? Daisy tries to stick up for Gatsby, saying that most of the guests are just party crashers, that he's too polite to turn away. And Nick tells Tom that Gatsby's money comes from a chain of drug stores, like CVS Pharmacy. Daisy seems reluctant to go, worried that some magical party guest will sweep Gatsby off his feet while she's not there. Later that night, at the end of chapter 6, Gatsby worries that Daisy didn't like the party. His worry makes him tell Nick his ultimate desire. Gatsby would like to recreate the past he and Daisy had together five years ago. Gatsby is an absolutist about Daisy. He wants her to say that she never loved Tom, to erase her emotional history with him and with their daughter, probably. Does Gatsby know she has a daughter? Nick doesn't think that this is possible. Gatsby tells Nick about the magical past that he wants to recreate. Nick says, you can't repeat the past. And Gatsby says, can't repeat the past? Why, of course you can, old sport. Of course you can. The past he wants to recreate was encapsulated in the moment of Gatsby and Daisy's first kiss five years ago. Remember the story Jordan told at the end of chapter four? As soon as Gatsby kissed Daisy, and maybe more than kissed. All of his fantasies about himself and his future fixated solely on her. His heart beat faster and faster as Daisy's white face came up to his own. He knew that when he kissed this girl and forever wed his unutterable visions to her perishable breath, his mind would never romp again like the mind of God. So he waited listening for a moment longer to the tuning fork that had been struck upon a star. Then he kissed her, dot, dot, dot. At his lips touch, she blossomed for him like a flower and the incarnation was complete. That's a metaphor for very, very close intimacy. You catch my drift? Hearing this description of Gatsby's love, Nick is close to remembering some related phrase or song, but he can't quite reach the memory. And some things are just lost to time forever, right? Right? This has been Mr. Spencer with Chapter 6.